You are landing. Suddenly a bright green flash lights up your cockpit and interferes with your vision. You have just witnessed a laser illumination. What do you do? Laser strikes bring risks to the air crew and their passengers because any laser strike can have adverse effects on the vision of the air crew and potentially their ability to safely fly the aircraft. One way to mitigate the risks presented by laser exposures is through education and training of air crew so they are prepared to successfully handle a laser event. The FAA and the U.S. Air Force have been working together to study the effects of laser exposures on air crew. They have prepared this video to increase air crew awareness of cockpit laser incidents. Now to give us a pilot's perspective, here is retired L-1011 Delta Airlines pilot, Captain Bill Connor, Ph.D. Well, our incidents in this country are a lot more common than, than people are aware of through the news media. Uh, for the last six months, we've had over 300 incidents in this country alone, and since 2004, we've had 1,700 incidents. Both airplanes and helicopters have been targeted, usually during the most critical phases of flight, approach, landing, and takeoff. Lasers are a threat to air safety, and steps have been taken by several countries, including the U.S., to enact legislation defining penalties for purposefully illuminating aircraft and to punish individuals who do so with fines and or jail time. In fact, several states in Australia have banned laser pointers and imposed mandatory jail time for possession without a lawful reason. Most laser incidents are believed to be nuisance or pranks and primarily involve laser pointers. Nearly everyone knows what laser pointers are. They are handheld devices used to point to objects projected on a screen during a presentation. They are also used outdoors to point out objects in the night sky. The most common laser colors are green and red, but other colors are also available. Most of the laser incidents have occurred in the early evening between 7 and 11 p.m., or at dusk and at night. Lasers pose the highest flight risk at night because the dark adapted eye is many times more sensitive to light and the laser is much brighter relative to the background than during the day. What makes a laser potentially dangerous is the amplification of light by the optics of the eye. Even a laser pointer emitting just 5 milliwatts can appear blindingly bright. Other factors that contribute to how dangerous a laser can be are how powerful the laser is, which roughly equates to its brightness, its wavelength, which we already know favors green lasers, how long the exposure is, how much the beam diverges or spreads out, and the distance from the laser. The hazards to the air crew are primarily to the retina of the eye, not the skin, the airframe, or avionics. The laser strikes on air crew occur at distances that are well beyond the hazard distances for skin. As for the airframe, the only lasers currently capable of causing damage are military lasers that cost hundreds of millions of dollars and that are still in development. The effects that visible lasers can have on the eye and vision range from nothing more than the appearance of a bright light to severe and permanent physical damage to the eye. In the scenario of cockpit laser illuminations, permanent physical damage to the eye is highly unlikely. The lasers involved in cockpit laser strikes, for the most part, will not cause physical damage to the eye due to variables such as length of exposure, intensity, and or proximity. On the other hand, even lasers no more powerful than laser pointers are very capable of causing non-permanent visual effects that include startle, distraction, glare, and flash blindness. It is the visual effects that lasers can produce that are the greatest threat to aircrew. Well, the problem you, you run up against with a, a laser uh, illumination is uh, the unexpected uh, of the laser illumination. And, and the pilot's response, uh, as we've had in one of our previous laser illuminations, was the pilot thought another aircraft had come into his airspace with the landing lights on. And of course, this created an enormous startle effect. With startle, uh, this is a, a, an involuntary response to an unexpected event. And with this, it, it alters your uh, physical, visual, and mental aspects as the way that it changes your, uh, your, your uh, attention uh, away from the normal flight path of the airplane. 
uh, while you're trying to find out exactly what's happened to you and have any idea that it happened to the rest of the crew? And do you have any idea how long this is going to be, uh, that your vision is going to be impaired? So with this, that, uh, with the conditioning, with uh, on startle uh, recognition and response, you have four phases that you go through. And one phase is distraction, and disruption, disorientation, and incapacitation. Now, in distraction, if you've been trained well enough, when you recognize the laser illumination, it can be just distraction, which is just a momentary attention shift away from the primary flight task. If it's a uh, disruption, this means an extended uh, time away from your primary flight task that you're having to have dedicated uh, selective attention to re reestablish your normal, uh, normal control. Now, when you get into the disorientation, where a person at that point will probably be in some type of a turn with the aircraft to where they're not really flying straight and level. And, and when this happens, the, the person uh, loses the perspective of their situation awareness as far as uh, our spatial awareness of the, uh, between the direction of flight and the surroundings. And this just starts to get to be very critical. And it finally evolves over into incapacitation. And this is where the crew member has lost not only uh, situation awareness, but spatial orientation uh, with reference to the outside world. And the incapacitated crew member should immediately transfer control of the aircraft to the, to the other pilot because it, uh, he no longer can reliably determine the aircraft's altitude, attitude, or direction of flight which becomes very critical. The first effect is the sudden appearance of a bright light. Let's see that again. Note that the runway is still visible. However, an event like this when unexpected may cause a startle response that can distract a pilot, even if the light is not bright enough to cause significant glare. Also, the fact a bright light appeared unexpectedly may generate fear that an even brighter light may be coming. In this example, the light is being flashed intermittently. This is typical of most laser strikes on cockpits, because as we showed earlier, it is very difficult to maintain a small beam on a small moving target at long distances. As laser intensity increases, glare can become a problem. Glare is an obscuration of vision that is like a veil of light placed over part of the visual scene. Glare is present only while the laser is on. The amount of area obscured will depend on the intensity of the laser light. It will also depend on its color. As stated before, green light is more effective than red or blue light in stimulating the visual system. Therefore, a green laser of the same power as a red laser will create more glare. As laser intensity and glare increase, a point is reached where the eye can no longer respond normally when the laser is turned off. The result is a phenomenon called Flash blindness. Flash blindness is a temporary loss of vision that continues after a laser is turned off. After the exposure, there is an after image that varies in size and duration depending on the level of exposure and color of the laser. The effect is similar to what occurs after exposure to a camera flash, only it can be much greater in magnitude and duration. Even so, recovery time of functional vision is usually rapid. The after images lose strength quickly and can be seen through even though they may persist for several minutes. This illustrates safety distances for the visual effects from a green laser pointer of maximum legal power of 5 milliwatts. As you can see, it is extremely unlikely that a pointer could cause eye damage. The pointer would have to be within 50 feet of the pilot and maintained in focus on one spot on the retina for several seconds. Even though damage is unlikely, a laser pointer can produce the other visual effects at significant distances. The effects vary with range, with the strongest effect, flash blindness, occurring at the closest range. How can I tell I am being illuminated by a laser? The most obvious distinction is that the laser light is of one bright color. The most common colors are green and red as shown here. In contrast, Searchlights, spotlights, and landing lights of other aircraft are white in appearance. Besides educating pilots, the FAA and the Department of Defense are also conducting research to better understand laser effects on pilot performance and to develop procedures to minimize the effects. 
Working together, they have outfitted a 737 simulator with both red and green lasers that track realistically as the aircraft maneuvers. All of the in-the-cockpit scenes in this video were shot in this simulator. The outcome of this research has discovered that pilots subjected to laser events quickly learn the extent of the visual effects from exposures and how to work around them, even in the most challenging flight situations. A couple of things that the pilot should uh, remember when they're illuminated at a uh, laser illumination is do not rub your eyes. Do not look into the beam. That's in areas that you can immediately help resolve some of the problem. If you can't look away from it, shield your eyes. Look down at your flight instruments. Turn your background lights up. This is a problem that some pilots have experienced to where they have been illuminated, they haven't been able to shield their eyes quickly enough, and they haven't been able to see their background lights on their uh, instruments. Don't leave them down, turn them up. Some of the things you do want to do is get your autopilot on, communicate with the other pilot to transfer control of the aircraft and to ascertain you know, which one has the best visibility at the time. Make sure that you've contacted the tower. Make sure that you have control space for you to go fly into while you're resolving your vision impairment problems. And also check uh, your aircraft because during this time of the visual uh, impairment, you may have been in a turn or in an unusual uh, uh, configuration. And you want to be able to reestablish a normal profile of the airplane. So this is why it's important to get your autopilot on so it'll help restabilize the airplane while you're checking out what are the configurations that the aircraft is in now and what you want to return it to. So do make sure that you communicate and communications is probably one of the most important things you can do. Laser illumination should not evoke startle and the information in this video should be used to guide an appropriate response. Help the FAA by reporting these incidents per the FAA Advisory Circular 70-2. Additional information may be obtained from these web addresses listed on the screen. Yeah, we were on about a 10-mile final, and it was definitely bright green and trying to get our attention. 